Hi, this is 365801 and this is a reading wrap-up video for February the 1st through to the 11th and also the first two weeks of February's Buzzword Readathon as I will be doing it for the full month. Now the Buzzword Readathon is usually only focused on the first week of any given month but as I have a very substantial TBR focusing on colours, I have decided to continue reading these titles for the full month of February. So look forward to more colour based BL titles in the next reading wrap up as well. Now I have a substantial stack of print titles in front of me just now and they do include one of my long series. Um, every month I'm going to try and read a long BL series and I'm also going to try and read a light novel as well to try and include a little bit more prose in my reading. Of course I also read a few digital titles mostly from Futekia. I also have a, another digital title that I haven't read yet but I'm planning to read uh, probably in the second half of the month. Uh, so yeah, most of the digital titles will either be Lesin or Futekia. So let's just get stuck into the first title and that title is Blue Morning by Shoko Hidaka. Oh my goodness, do I love this series so much. So this is an eight volume series. It's published by Sublime. As I said, Shoko Hidaka. So the artwork is going to be absolutely sumptuous and delicious and the character designs are just going to be lovely. And I could go on and on and on about this and I'm probably going to. So I'm going to do a separate video. Um, now when I say I'm going to do a separate video, it's usually because I absolutely love a title. So there's only so many actual review videos that get done by me that are proper, just separate standalone reviews and it's usually because I absolutely love the series and I want more people to read it but there's also a lot of titles that I absolutely love and I've never actually managed to bring myself to make a video on because I love it so much and every time I try I never feel like I express just how fantastic it is so if I don't actually manage to get a, <laughs> a review video about Blue Morning out just know it's fantastic and it's only because I feel it inadequate to express um, the joy that you will feel by reading this. Please just read it. Know that it is so far up there that I am not worthy. Okay so the next thing I read um, and I've read a couple of times throughout this uh, two week period is actually A Man of Virtue. This is Ji Gang E and Wook. It's available on Les Hen. As I've said previously, I am reading it as and when I get free coins and I got a lot of free coins in uh, January and at the end of January, because I checked in every day, I got even more coins that I could use in February. So of course, I just went straight back to A Man of Virtue and spent them all there. Um, so I think this was episode 46 and then I've read a few extra afterwards. So I think I'm up to episode 56. Um, and of course, this follows the story of Nam Jin Wu and Ma Sang Tai, who um, are now at the stage. It, it was so frustrating previously. It was so frustrating. And now they're kind of at that stage where they're finally trying to make an honest go of it or at least as honest as Ma Sang Tai can can kind of get because he's not really known for being honest about anything uh, so yeah I think Nam Jin Woo is, is perfectly um, you know entitled to have a little bit of reservations although as it turns out he's the one that now needs to have more feelings so he's aware, aware now of Ma Sang Tai's level of affection and is now trying to have to match that uh, for this curse to be lifted. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. And I love the sexiness of it. I love it. it's just like, you know what, I'm horny, let's just do this. And they just they just do that. And it's great. And I do like the fact that the other couple or the other characters are now getting a bit more involved. And so now that they're at a point in their relationship that is a bit more established, 
they're now as a as a, a work it's now shifting its focus to the other members of this little uh, cast of characters and I like that I like that it's going to be a little bit longer it's going to be a bit more I'm only kind of like halfway through and I'm enjoying it and I've been enjoying it so I'm happy that I'm taking my time and I'm not just binging it although it's just oh it's taking everything in me not to just you know spend more money buy more coins and just binge the whole thing so yeah I will be spending coins as and when I get them and um, every once in a while and it's really hard it's really hard not to buy the rest because it is so good and I'm enjoying A Man of Virtue so much. Now the next thing that I read on Les Hin, um straight after A Man of Virtue practically it was on the 2nd so as I mentioned Love is an Illusion comes out the 2nd the 12th and the 22nd of each month for at least uh, the foreseeable future but not for ever unfortunately <laughs> Fargo has indicated that it will be wrapping up fairly soon which I don't know what I'm going to do with my life then I don't know anyway um, the 2nd's uh, chapter was us going back to Chowon and Chowon's story with Kyungsu and uh, Chowon was just so frustrating and you could just see Chowon eking back into previous uh, behaviours and thought processes that had kind of been <laughs> I want to say um, Kyungsu'd out of him <laughs> Um, and so when I did post this on Twitter, it was like, yes, he, he needs a good reeling and that will set him straight, <laughs> which is not what I would usually say about anyone in real life. These are characters. It's fine. I can say it, but, um, and I'm uh, honestly recording this on the 12th. So it, I've already read this chapter or this episode and, oh, what do you know? <laughs> That's totally right. <laughs> I'm really... I, I don't want to be proven right in this case, but I guess I did and I enjoyed it. So, you know, that's just Chowon. I guess Chowon just really, really, really needs to feel loved, to be able to feel secure, to be able to feel um, like Chowon can function in society on a non-aggressive way. And I kind of just feel really sorry about it. So I think with Kyung Su's help and with some therapy Joe one would be fine <laughs> but yeah it was what i said what was gonna happen and it happened so um you know i'm not i'm not psychic i'm not nostradamus but i'm just saying <laughs> i kind of knew this was gonna be the case so next as part of the buzzword readathon i read a futekia title and that was blue sky wars and this was written by Tsutomu, who has another work on the Futekia site, so if you're interested, um, go and check it out. Um, this little story is just a one volume story, and it's lovely artwork. I do like uh, Tsutomu's artwork, it's very nice. The characters are very expressive, so um, it's kind of a bit sketchy, but I like that feeling, very light. This particular story is about Tamaki, who is a trainee teacher and goes to work at an elementary school. However, he is a bit standoffish and doesn't particularly know how to interact around children. And his mentor at the school kind of recognises that early on and decides that <laughs> he will have to just stay at her house and look after her kids in the evening along with her brother who is also a teacher at the elementary school. His name is Hideo and of course we now have our two main male protagonists. They end up uh, learning from each other and spending time with the children and Tamaki learns to relax around children and get better at being a teacher. This was nice. The only issue was, of course, that there was a tragic backstory with Hideo and the fact that he had been violent in the past. And this kind of comes out when a very angry parent phones the school and Tamaki is the one that answers the call. 
and has to listen to what he deems as uh, rumours that have no base and then finds out that actually perhaps it was Hideo that they were talking about. And of course Hideo doesn't really want to talk about it either. So there's a bit of tension there. Tamaki, however, um, really likes Hideo at this point, even though, of course, when he first met him, he was a bit standoffish and ends up uh, wanting to champion him and cheer him up and spend time with him. And by then, you already know that Tamaki has feelings for Hideo and that Hideo probably has feelings for Tamaki. (laughs) There's some lovely little moments when they go play baseball or when uh, they're sharing... Uh, their futons. It is very nice, very sweet. The tragic element to the backstory I kind of figured out very early on. There was a very small little mini flashback and I, in my own mind, I'm like, this is BL. I know exactly where this story is going and if you have that thought then you'll probably be proved right as well. So it wasn't the greatest shock. Um, I kind of could see it coming but the reason that uh, I was so disturbed by it is even though I could see it coming and I could kind of tell that this was how the story was going to go I wasn't really prepared for how awful the teacher in the past was that is absolutely shocking behavior from a teacher absolutely appalling so yeah I was not impressed at all (laughs) Um, but overall I really like the work it's a really good story Um, It is classed as teacher, school life, there's delinquents and a bit of an age gap. So there's only a wee bit of spiciness. It's only two spices, two spicy chilies. Uh, So yeah, if you're interested, go and check out Blue Sky Wars. I have to say that it was a good BL, but um, it wasn't exactly accurate representation of teacher training life. Because only at one point do they address the fact that Tamaki has work to do outside of school hours. (laughs) And it's like, trainee teachers work so bloody hard. Teachers work hard anyway. But if you're a trainee teacher, you have to do so much extra work. You just basically are working every single hour that you're awake. So when you go home, you're going over lessons and you're writing up lesson plans because that all has to be done even though you're like oh I'll just teach this no you need to be absolutely 100% prepped and ready and you have to have it all documented so I was like this is lies (laughs) this is not real life at all so yeah uh, Blue Sky Wars is a cute little story but full of lies so if it if this makes you think oh I could so I could be an elementary school teacher. Yeah, I could be a primary school teacher. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> and I loved the moment at the very first chapter when he said that the only reason he's doing elementary is because he doesn't have to deal with the hormones of older teenagers in middle school or high school. And I was like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference <laughs> what age they are. It's all annoying. <laughs> so I thought it was really funny. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, I did think it was amusing to see someone going through teacher training. It's quite nice. But yeah, Blue Sky Wars is an interesting one. So this next title is Golden Cane by Asagiri Yo. And this is a Be Beautiful title from I think like 2003, which is obviously very old for BL. And boy, is it dated. This is a stupid pile of <laughs> poo. It's so rubbish. It's so bad. There's things about it I like though. So let's start with the positives. Um, I like how it's kind of old-fashioned art style. I like Asagirio's art style in the way that the, the panels are composed and um, it's very shoujo-esque but like over-the-top melodrama type shoujo even within the composition um it's it's of that time period of late 90s early 2000s unapologetically and unironically of that kind of time period so i like the art style it kind of has that nostalgic feel 
but at the same time, the actual story is an absolute dumpster fire of nonsense. It's, well, uh, it's called Golden Cane, but <laughs> the main character is Shun. Shun has an older brother, Keiichi, who is perfect in every way, but uh, Shun obviously has issues with that and has a, an inferiority complex that he has to deal with. Unfortunately, uh, Keiichi ended up getting into a traffic accident whilst saving Shun. At the same time, he was about to post some sort of letter. He has mentioned in the past this person, Kane, who is a sort of international um, model for glamorous photo shoots and things like that. Although what on earth he is supposed to be using these photo shoots to sell, I have no idea. <laughs> At no point in time is there any product placement. <laughs> so it's like, oh, he's so fabulous. This is so surface. This is so on the top surface. There's like no depth to it. It's full on melodrama with absolutely no substance. It's just nonsense. And the dialogue is appalling. Absolutely appalling. I don't... It was a struggle to read it in any serious way. But if you read it in a sort of like, this is absolute nonsense, I'm going to read it for a joke, then you might be able to get through it and actually have a bit of a fun time. The reason it's so full of nonsense is it's so predictable and so boring and so like I don't know why anyone would want to read this. The dialogue is so poor. I don't know if that's the translation or if it is actually just you know like that. But I'm sure a good translator could have made <laughs> made this appear to be more entertaining it's like watching no I'm not even going to be like that I think it's disparaging to even compare it to you know like daytime you know soaps and things they actually have much more substance than this story does anyway the reason that it's so bad is that it's actually got some good points in it <laughs> because it's so stupid. Like it's going along, going boring, boring, boring. And then all of a sudden it'll flip 180 and some <gasps> revelation will happen. And it just doesn't get dealt with. <laughs> and then you're reading it going, okay, well, I guess this is happening now. And then <gasps> another 180, this revelation happens. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like every chapter, it's like what melodrama. Da, da, da. Oh, it was so so stupid, utterly stupid. Um, I'm glad I read it though, because I've had it in my collection for a while now, and it's a good copy. It's really a uh, good quality considering how old this is, from like 2003, 2004. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's fun just because Asagiri Yo has. I, like I said, I like I like her artwork. I like her artwork, and I'm sure that this um, it's like a wee time capsule from the period of what Yaoi used to be, and it's not like that anymore. And I think that's what we should be grateful for. So if you take anything away from reading Golden Cane, it's that thank goodness it's not like that anymore. We, uh, we've moved on. The, you know, time, although we might think that it's, you know, social construct, this shows, this, this proves time has moved on. We have moved on as a society, at least in some small measure. So yeah, Golden Cane is an interesting one. I do not recommend it. So the next thing I read was Blue Sky by Yuko Kawabara, and this is a Jun Manga title. Um, yeah, it's kind of a bit of a meh, but also kind of fun one. Um, basically the premise at the back, at the Seidan Boys Dormitory there is a prophecy. The chief resident assistant always becomes romantically involved with his roommate during senior year. Wanting a little excitement in his life, 
Ryuichiro Kihara rigs the room selection process and picks the beautiful Kyosuke Yoshimi to be his roommate. After all, what better way to test the prophecy than to see if it can work its magic on the cold and aloof Yoshimi, aptly named the beautiful Prince of Ice. So this uh, volume has like three main couples. And the first one is Yoshimi and Kihara. And I've got to say it was a really poor start. So that's what I didn't like about it. The main story or the main couple, um, they start really poorly. It's so flat. It's got, it's lacking real emotion. It's all melodramatic, but with no substance and no real feeling. The dialogue as well is just absolutely nonsense. The way that they interact with each other everything. I really, I did not like this first story and I was ready to just put the book down and DNF it. But there was a saving grace and that is one of the other characters that's a side character that of course ends up being one of the main couples in, uh, part of one of the main couples. And that is Suzuki who is Yoshimi's former roommate and friend. And he is just a wee cinnamon roll. (laughs) The cutest wee twink. He is lovely. And uh, he has the best lines in it as well. He used the words nads at some point, and I haven't seen that or used the, the words nads in such a long time. It was kind of interesting to see this in a BL manga. Um, this is from 2007, 2008, so yeah, it's, it's quite a particular time period. Uh, the second couple is um, the older Yoshimi brother and one of the um, teachers, or at least the nurse the male nurse in the school. This is all male school, so boarding school and they're all in the dorms and stuff, so that kind of setting. So if you like settings uh, that are school, then this might be for you. I preferred though the th- the final couple, which was Suzuki and um, Kaga-kun, who had a crush on Yoshimi, uh, the younger, <laughs> and didn't um, get to have a relationship with him he confessed but was turned down and it turned out that um it was a bit of a revelation at the end that it turned out that suzuki had been in love with kagakun the whole time and i was like god bless you sweetheart he is just the best character so in terms of what was good about it i didn't really like the teacher ex-pupil uh relationship but they were 20 plus, you know, they were over 20. They didn't have a sexual relationship until he was over 20. He was the aggressor. He was like, I want to have a relationship with you while he was a student. And the teacher was like, no, hell no, uh uh-uh. And he said, well, will you wait for me? And he was like, no, I won't. I'm not having a relationship with you. So after he turned 20, that's when um, he was like, okay, let's have a relationship now. So, um, and the only sexual activity is between those two adult characters. So that was what was good about it. Their actual relationship wasn't great though. I think they needed to have a lot more communication. Um, What was also good about it was the chibis. So the art style is not to my liking overall um, and her standard art style, I don't really like so much, but her cute chibis and her comedic faces and things, they're actually very good and worth looking at and worth reading just for the chibis because the side characters get a lot more chibi action and uh, they are the best characters in this so i would not read blue sky for the first story i would just read it basically for the side character turned best thing in this chibi suzuki he's just great so yeah i wouldn't have given this a very good score if it was just based on the first story but i bump it up to like maybe a three just purely for uh chibi suzuki kun he was a sweetheart. So yeah, uh, give it a go if you can get hold of Blue Sky for a good price. So I kind of felt like at this point in time in the readathon I should probably indulge myself in a bit of a palette cleanser or something. I know I'm going to enjoy something I know is going to be a good story. Um, I didn't rate the Golden Cane or Blue Sky very high and uh, Blue Sky Wars wasn't that 
great it was okay uh, so at this point I think I maybe shouldn't have started with what could be argued as a masterpiece blue morning Ugh, um, so yeah I kind of feel like I was a bit spoiled there so I went to something that I knew I was going to enjoy and buy a manga car that I really love and that's over at the Fatikia site So when I went over to the Fidekia website, I just scrolled along to the next one and it was Golden Sparkles. So I knew I needed to read it. This is Suzumaru Minta's work. I love her artwork. Her characters are just cute and round and lovely and their expressions are just so adorable. You can't help but fall in love with the characters. And this particular work is uh, no exception. Uh, Himari Uehara. Um, is such a naive high school boy. He's starting first year. He's not really had the best time because he's good looking <laughs> and he doesn't really get on well with girls, although girls seem to like him. He's got a bit of a complex due to his um, super sweet and cute mother and sister. Um, so he's very naive. He's very intelligent, but naive, uh, especially about sex. Um, his father isn't there, so he doesn't really know what's going on with his body because he skipped his um, like sex education classes. And um, when he is having wet dreams, he doesn't actually know what they are. Um, but his friend that he's just made at the all boys school, um, Gaku Asada, uh, starts to teach him all about his um, body in many ways. And of course, um, Asada also has uh, not a great experience from middle school. It's just kind of ironic that these two boys have their names in the alphabet, the Japanese alphabet. And so they're sitting next to each other and they get to know each other that way. They're both the top of the class, so they have that in common as well. And they also have in common the fact that they didn't have a great time in middle school and they don't really want to talk about it and then they kind of do and they confide in each other. And it's such a nice wee story. Um, Asada or Gaku, he just kind of um, it's, it's just kind of just goes with it straight away but then realises that he might be gay. I think that's kind of like, hmm... Could you not have realised that already, Paul? <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, you know, if that, that's what it takes for you to recognise that. But they, the two of them are just kind of exploring who they are and their sexuality and what they like and what they want um, together. And they're kind of um, just navigating that. There is, of course, the one character, there's always a side character who I love, and the side character who I love is their friend from the class, who's maybe putting his foot in it, um, saying things he shouldn't say, <laughs> and um, who just wants everyone to be happy, and, and he, he seems to totally accept that they might be a couple, and that, hey, that's cool, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I really liked the the boys in their class that all seem to support them in their relationship it's just such a sweet lovely little thing if you haven't read it already i think you've been sleeping on it suzumaru minta's work is just beautiful and this one is just a nice wee one it's very sexy um and i like that it is a little bit sexy i am um, i kind of like that with her work yeah, I enjoy it a lot. This was a really good one. This is the palette cleanser I needed. It's back up there for a five star read. Really good. Now I also read Scarlet. This is a blue title and this is Hiroma Darame's work. And before I go on to talk about what um, the story is about, just look at that front cover artwork. It is absolutely stunning. It's so beautiful. I would love a print of it. Even on the back, you've just got 
this lovely artwork and inside as well it's the same artwork just um, slightly bigger and it's really wonderful to see the details in the coloured work oh so so nice so it's nice to have that little colour insert as well but I'm absolutely obsessed with this cover artwork the eyelashes the lips the hair so much detail so beautiful now obviously having mentioned how much I love uh, Hiro Madarame's artwork it's not to say that um, this is a five star read for me for Scarlet um, I mean compared to Cute Devil Cute Devil is like up there I love it so much um, the artwork and the art style and the way that she does her panels the beautiful expressions but also all the comedic expressions they're all there so it's hilarious and I love reading it I love that aspect of it, but the actual stories themselves, I'm not so much of a fan of. This is from 2007, um, and she says this was her first one, which is like, wow, was that, was it only 2007? Because there is a sort of, this is a little bit old fashioned in some respects. Um, <laughs> but I would definitely give you a big warning and I did know this going in because I have read Scarlet before. Um, it's just been a very long time. Um, warning for abusive relationships, obsessive relationships, stalker behavior, assault, sexual assault, serious sexual assault, uh, attempted murder maybe? You know, it's not great. The first two stories... Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not really such a huge fan of. I don't like the couples. I'm not rooting for them. I don't really want Akio <laughs> to be with him, uh, his his partner. I just I just find it it's too toxic for me. So yeah, um, if you are concerned in any way, uh, don't read it. Um, there are some other short stories, some other characters, and there. They're okay. <laughs> they're not the best stories, but they're okay. So there's um, Toki and Harumi from work who meet in a gay bar, and uh, Harumi's just painfully shy and awkward and can only really be not even himself, but a version of himself when he's out and he sees. Uh, Toki who he's been obsessing about at work see once again obsessive behavior so I don't know maybe this whole this book like the theme of the stories are obsession um, there's Kato and Naoki Naoki has a crush on Kato Kato slept with other people at the start of the relationship until he fell in love with Naoki it's just these things that I'm like, oof, oof, oof. So in each of the stories, there's an element of, oh, I'm not really a fan of this, or no, this isn't for me. Um, in the way that I can read Cute Devil and there's sexual assault and I can pass it off because it's part of the story and it's done in a way that I'm like, oh, okay. Um, in this one, it's a bit more real and a little bit more sad and depressing. Um, but there is one character who I did enjoy and um, that was uh, Yamamoto who basically is the only sane person in this whole um, volume and he is very much against a lot of things and has no time for anyone um, but he does a very comedic uh, emceeing at the end with um, Hiro Madarame as they're going through the different stories. Scarlet though is beautiful, it is her work, I'm happy to have it in the collection and um, that's not to say I won't read it again, I probably will. So beautiful artwork um, and interesting stories but yes there's warnings there for those who have issues with those topics, be warned. So next I read Crimson Snow, this is one of the newest acquisitions into my collection and as I'm trying to actually read what I'm bringing in, I thought um, this would be a perfect opportunity to read it straight away. Uh, this is obviously the Old Blue imprint. Um, 
and one of their last ones because it's March 2011 uh, before they stopped actually uh, printing anymore so it is um, a slightly larger trim size as well this is Hori Tomoki's work and in it there are I think it's like three stories and then one of them has like an afterward part as well so the main story crimson snow is a yakuza based one um or though i should say it has a yakuza and a tea ceremony um i guess you'd say he's the person who's going to inherit the tea ceremony family thing <laughs> So there's lots of kimono and nice traditional old Japanese houses and things like that, which I love. Um, and it was really easy and fast to read. This whole volume actually was really fast to read. So it's not as though there's a lot of dense storytelling within a page. It's very quick. You can get it done um, like half an hour, 40 minutes, finished. Uh, so yeah, there's the majority of this volume is the Crimson Snow story involving these two individuals and not much happens really. <laughs> so yeah, that's maybe why it was so fast. Anyway, there was another one which was um, At First Sight, which I really thought was cute and it was about a boy who had a crush on a guy at college and he uh, unfortunately broke his glasses and who helped him around for the day but his crush and it turns out his crush had a crush on him it was mutual yay i thought it was quite nice because it's actually uh foreign characters in a foreign setting liam and maddox were the names and so um it did seem as though it was quite an international one i thought oh that's quite good because we don't often get um manga or bl stories that are foreign set well unless you're Natsume Ono <laughs> is it Natsume Ono? Natsume Ono? I'm gonna have to check that um but yeah and then there was another one which was interesting about hypnosis and um forgetting people in the past and things like that um I'm not entirely sure that was an age gap for sure <laughs> but the art style is quite endearing it's easy to look at it's not what i would call beautiful it's not groundbreaking but um it's very competent and i certainly could read it quite easily it was a very quick fast one so yeah crimson snow um the reason i chose to read it today is because it is snow we outside i woke up today and it was all white covered in snow and it's been snowing for most of this evening as well so yep it's a snowy day um <laughs> but crimson snow was very nice i'm not too sure if it's really warranting the high price tag that i've seen this go for um so yeah i would wait until you can get it for a good price so a good one nonetheless now just as it was coming to the end of this sort of two week period it's not quite full two weeks it's the 11th but um we do have a few things coming up for the weekend, so I just thought I would uh, do it till the 11th. Uh, there have been a top 50 for the 2020 on Lesson, so I went back over to Lesson, and even though it's not part of the Buzzword Readathon, I wanted to read something that has been in and around um, Twitter and the BL community for a while. One of them was A Man of Virtue, and the other title is. Pian Pian, is that how I how you say it? I have no idea how to pronounce this. He Sin Young. And uh, they have the first 10 episodes free of a lot of these top 50 um, titles. So because the first 10 chapters were free, I was like, right, okay, give it a go, see what it's like. And hope, fingers crossed, that it's not top 50, like it's not great, like it's not as good as you know it's going to be. Let's just pretend that it's not and fingers crossed you won't like it, you won't enjoy it and you won't want to buy the rest of the title. Well, it's fabulous. <laughs> I hate it because it's so good. It's so good. And yeah, uh, I'm going to have to now start collecting some 
Pian Pian as well. I just love that it's called Pian Pian. And I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but oh, it's so good. Yeah, so it's about um, your soulmate. Once again, it's a soulmate story. And it's about having the letters of your soulmate somewhere on like a, a natural tattoo, like almost like a birthmark slash tattoo type thing where the the letters of their name um, are somewhere on your body and so you have to just try and see if you can find that person but you've got a one in 100,000 chance to find that person and when you do find it then other you know biological things happen and you'll probably feel very attracted to them so it's yeah it's like a, a yeah soulmate type situation and um, the main character has his in a very intimate place and has started having all kinds of um, sexual feelings for his kind of boss who is the chef he's a trainee chef and the main head chef is his boss and oh the the sexy dreams he's been having oh no I wonder what that could mean (laughs) I have no idea where it's going but I really want to see and so far it's been so entertaining and of course as soon as I got to the end of the episode 10 I was like well I could just buy the I could just buy another I I could just buy another and I was like slippery slope uh so yeah that kind of shows how how good it is that within the the 10 uh, little trial ones you can you can just have a go and read it and yes it's it's enough to show me that I'm gonna enjoy this and I will have to collect them. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good. And I, I love these kinds of stories. It's comedic and it's sexy and it's fun. And that's what I'm looking for. So yeah, I'm glad I've got two other things to keep me occupied on Les Hin, Um, As I know that love is an illusion will not be uh, going on forever. So yeah, Pian Pian is another one to collect. Now, Green Light is the light novel that I have read, and this is by Yura Tamaki, with the illustration by Taishi Zhao. Taishi Zhao, very obvious that it is Taishi Zhao's work. And when I picked this up for the buzzword readathon TBR, it was like, oh great, I get to read a light novel that I haven't read, or that I haven't read in years. Brilliant. <laughs> completely forgetting that I just read this. I honestly, I, I mean, it felt like, how long have we been in lockdown? How long has this world been out of whack? Like six, seven or eight months ago, not long time, like literally half a year ago, still in lockdown, because that's when I was in lockdown before, this is when I picked this up. And I picked it up because I hadn't read a light novel in ages and thought, wow, you know, you should probably read a light novel. I think the last time you read one of these was a year ago with Eat or Be Eaten. You should give this a go. And I read it and thought, this was pants. (laughs) So when I picked it up and I was like, great, a light novel. And I turned around and read the synopsis at the back and realised, oh, you read this and you didn't like it. So I had a quick kind of read through again and it was really hard going again. Um, I mean, parts of it were cute and I don't want to say the translation was bad, but it was a bit like, does does anyone remember My So-Called Life? Well, everyone should remember Dawson's Creek, right? So you know how they always had like 20 or 30 year olds playing people who were supposed to be teenagers and the language they used was really inappropriately flowery and a bit obnoxious like in a more if it's even possible more sort of sanctimonious Daria way (laughs) like I love Daria but still you know only the most I uh, I guess there's a there's a sort of teenager and I was definitely it but I just think no real teenager speaks like that no real teenager speaks like that so yeah, uh, Izumi, who's one of the characters, he definitely had a way with either using, and that was the thing, there was no consistency, either using a very adult, flowery, far too intellectual uh, language, or having like elementary school level child's language. There was no in between. So the tone 
of the characterization was thrown because the the level of language was not appropriate. I guess this is supposed to be like young adult level. It did not come off like that because it either sounded like someone who was uh, like 10 year old shouting out, you know, rude words to someone or some sort of hoity-toity intellectual university student trying to speak and sound fancy and it just didn't work and I guess maybe some teenagers are like that but the but the disconnect was just it didn't sit well with me anyway it was about a boy who um is sort of tsundere but because he becomes too tsunsun um he and his friend get on really well in elementary school and then unfortunately due to misunderstanding the rest of the class turn on him even though he used to be like cool and popular and you know the best and so it does kind of have shades of um silent voice that kind of thing so um he then has to try and work through uh, his own issues to become best friends again with the, his friend that he stopped being friends with because the whole class loves this boy and hates him because of the way that he speaks to this person the, the way he interacts with him and the rest of the class he becomes pretty um jaded and difficult to be around yeah i didn't love it it's definitely you know if i want something that's going to be trashy and rubbish then it's got to be really trashy it's got to be you know don't worry mama style trashy that i love this one was too like watching Dawson's Creek and I'm honestly I was not that much of a fan the originally the first time around so yeah not one that I would recommend green light we'll see how the other ones do but at least it's another one done for the month and we'll see what comes up for next month in my light novel reading so that was pretty much everything that I read from the first through to the 11th so there are, I think, 13, 13 volumes of print, manga, and then a couple of volumes uh, on Futekia and a few titles that I've started reading on Leshin or continue reading on Leshin. There was also a title that was just released, actually, um, in February. So I just kind of started it. Um, so I will finish that for the rest of February. And that is... Uh, I think Je t'aime Café Noir and that is um, um, Tomoko Yamashita title that is now on Lesson. They've got loads of Yamashita on Lesson now. I'm so excited. I want more people to read um, her work because it's so good. So I am enjo- enjoying that title just now. I think I'm halfway through it. It's like a series of short stories and she does have a few like collected short story works out there. So um, I will be reading some more colour-based titles on um, Putekia. I will read that one <laughs> Jun Mango digital title that I bought last year. So I will try and read that one. And I have, yes, yeah, I've not forgotten about SDEM or uh, <clears throat> Geo Brand, unfortunately. <laughs> I still have some of their titles to read. So I still have quite a few uh, colour-based um, print and digital there's a lot more digital um but there's certainly some print titles as well so i will be trying to read some more of them for february there is also the um manga love readathon that she geeks out hosts so if you're interested in that go head on over to her channel as well i'll put the link in the description um so i will probably read a couple of titles um, over the weekend, so the 12th, which has just been recorded today, I will be reading a bit more of Je Tim, and then moving on to some titles that might be for the Manga Love Readathon and um, will probably also be a bit of the Buzzword Readathon as well. We'll see what I can get read over this long weekend. Um, February uh, 12th through to the 14th is when the Manga Love Readathon is. So um, join in if you can. And I will probably continue with some more buzzword readathon titles for the rest of February as well. So yeah, 
I um, do hope to get the Blue Morning review out at some point. <laughs> Fingers crossed that I will get that done. But so far this uh, month, Blue Morning is a masterpiece. It's, it's just good and it's by, you know, like head and shoulders uh, and a whole body uh, standing on a plinth above everything else I've read this month so far. Um, although Golden Sparkle oh, just is lovely too. Um, but yeah, there's some good works I've read and some not so great works. But Blue Morning has been a slog to get through because it's eight volumes and I needed to take the time to actually sit and read it and maybe take you know an afternoon or an evening off and then come back to it to let my whole self process it it's so good and I enjoyed that experience and I'm glad I gave that experience to myself so um if you love blue morning too <laughs> um and if you have read pian pian is that how you pronounce it pian pian I, f I feel like I'm pian pian it's like that <laughs> I feel like um GGB. um anyway <laughs> <laughs> if you've read any of these titles um, and you've got any comments or thoughts or feelings on them you'd like me to know about them please comment down below and um, if you like this video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing I make videos about um, BL, yaoi, manga, male male romance and all that good stuff uh, so yeah I'll see you in the next one remember every day is a BL day take care bye